Welcome to the latest edition of the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. On today's podcast, we'll talk NFL playoffs. Yes, the season is over for the Browns, but the playoffs continue. But first, we'll jump into now that we've had a chance to let it sit for a few days, how at least will I think about this Brown season in total now that it's all said and done. That's all coming up and a whole lot more on this edition of the Bullpen with Adam the Bull brought to you by Bet Rivers. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. Folks get extra value this football season with Bet Rivers Squares. Win up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10 in same game parlays on any game with the Squares icon to earn a square. Um, if you go to the, the Bet River Sportsbook right now, the lines are there, of course, for the four championship games. I'll make some picks on the bullpen live on Thursday. I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, the four games, just give them to you now real quick before we get back to the Browns. Saturday at 4.30, the Ravens nine-point favorite over the Texans right now. Saturday at 8.15, the Niners are a nine-and-a-half-point favorite over the Packers. Sunday at 3, the Lions are a six-and-a-half-point favorite over the Bucks. And Sunday at 8.30, the Bills, uh, excuse me, at 6.30, the Bills at all Eastern times are a two-and-a-half-point favorite over the Chiefs. So all the home teams are favored. Most are significantly favored, especially the Saturday games. And so after a, a mostly bad first weekend of the playoffs, hopefully the second weekend will be better, but based on the spreads, you wouldn't think it would be, except for that Chiefs um, Bills game. We'll get to that a little more later and look back at the first weekend of the playoffs. But first, we look back at the 2023 slash 24 Browns season. The Browns end up finishing the year, including the playoffs, at 11 and 7. They finish second ahead of the Steelers for the first time in franchise history. If you include the playoff game, the Browns only outscored their opponents by three points this year. They had a plus three point differential, including the playoff game, which obviously is not great. So how do we think back about this Brown season now that it's over? Everybody's got to make that determination for themselves. Depends how you, you know, if you only look at a good season as winning a championship, then obviously it's a failure. If you look at it as, did you make a run in the playoffs? It's a failure. Uh, by any standard, the the Browns' trip to the playoffs was a failure. There, there's there's no way you can look at that as a failure, uh, as not a failure. I do think as time has passed now, three days later, um, that I don't look at the entire season as a failure. Yes, we're all emotional on Saturday after the game, and then certainly – you know, the first time I was on air, air was my podcast Saturday right here in the bullpen right after the game. And then my first time on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show Monday, still pretty emotional. Um, but now that it's Tuesday and we've done a second show of each, including this podcast here, I, you know, I can calm down a little bit and look back and say, well, what was good? What was bad? I think about this season as being fun. Now, I understand there's a number of you out there like, well, Bull, you're not really a Browns fan. You either jumped on the bandwagon or whatever you did, and that's fine. Yes, I didn't grow up rooting for the Browns. Yes, it's not – I don't live and die with it as much as I would uh, if I had grown up a Browns fan, but I do live and die with it. Not, I'm not saying to the degree that you do as a lifelong Browns fan – but I do live and die with it. I've been covering this team for a long time now. And I'm invested. I talk more about this team than anything else in my entire career. And the first time I ever got paid to talk about sports was in the summer of 1999. So I've basically been working for 25 years in the business. First couple of years, it was uh, in and out. But basically 25 years, I've been getting paid to talk sports one way or another. And I have talked more about the Cleveland Browns than any other team in the history of sports. And it's not close. So 
when you do that, I, I, I'm not trying to compare myself to a lifelong Browns fan. I would never do that. But when you're covering a team, and I'm not covering them as a, a beat reporter, that's different. There's, there's less emotion involved with that because you got to cover the team and you know you got to interact with the players and it, it, it's different than being doing what I do, which is give opinions, right? And other members of the media as well. There's other media members that weren't Browns fans growing up, but they become that way. So I bring that up to say that I am invested in this team fully, right? I've been covering the team since 2011. That's a lot of years and a lot of suffering from fans. I have no plans to stop talking about the Browns anytime soon. In my mind, unless something weird happens, I'm planning on doing this podcast, the bullpen here with Bet Rivers, and I'm planning on doing the ultimate Cleveland sports show in Cleveland, both of those things, till I retire, if I retire. That's my plan right now. You never know. It's a weird business. But that's my plan, is to talk, be talking about this team for the rest of my life, probably. I was into it. I wanted the Browns to win in the playoffs. It was a disastrous ending. But I look back from the investment in me, from the fan in me, and I enjoyed this season. They were a great story. Because they got to 11-6 and six in an impossible way. Dealing with more key injuries than any other team. Dealing with more money on injured reserve than any other team. We know, we, I'm not going to go through the laundry list. The fact, but I'll say, the fact that they got so many turnovers from their offense and still made it to the playoffs is crazy. It almost never happens. You can't win like this every year. If, if, if the Browns get a ton of injuries next year and bad quarterback play for the most part of the season and turn the ball over as much as they did, they probably won't win 11 games next year. You know, they got a lot of, they got bad luck when it came to injuries. But the Browns got a lot of good luck this year. It seems weird because the injuries were the worst. But in terms of the bounce of the ball and, and in terms of calls in games, for all the complaints about Miles Garrett not getting holding calls in his favor, overall, there are a lot of big calls in the regular season. Regular season. The playoffs, they didn't get the benefit of the calls. There's no cheating. If there is, I'd be stunned, but whatever. Maybe there is. I don't. If I live my life thinking this cheating in football, then what's the point of watching the games? Uh, so maybe I'm naive. Maybe I want to be naive. I don't know. I think that's crazy. M most people that have conspiracy theories are wrong and lunatics. Most of them. 99.9% .9 of them. So, uh, so when I look back at the regular season, I look at the Browns getting a lot of benefit of calls, a lot of field goals went their way both makes for them, misses for the other team. Dustin Hopkins was great this year for the Browns. Am I as confident that he'd be great next year? I don't know. There's a lot of uh, – so the season was great, and a lot of things went well. Now, as we head in towards the off – head towards the offseason now, you have to think what's sustainable about this team and what's not. Well, to me, the coach is sustainable. I have seen continued progress from Kevin Stefanski. I believe that Kevin Stefanski is a good coach that has to improve and I think will continue to improve and eventually has to make it pay off in the playoffs. The Browns technically are one and two with Kevin Stefanski as their head coach in the postseason. He wasn't at the, the playoff game they won. We all know that. But whether you count that on his record or not, the bottom line is he better have more than that one win in the playoffs. In the next few years, that number's got to go a lot higher or he will eventually lose his job. It's that simple. But the fact that he's pro I, I would think he gets an extension this offseason. I think that's a must. I would give him he's got one year left. I'd add three years to it, make it eight. And then he's got at least two more, if not three more years to get those playoff wins. And he's got to get them. Eventually, it's not good enough to be good. You got to be better than that. 
We've seen that in other places. That's what fans in Pittsburgh are complaining about. You could say they're crazy, but that's what they're complaining about. Same in Dallas. And eventually, you got to win more playoff games. That's how I felt as a Bengals fan. For those who you're a Bengals fan, you don't care. I do care. But I am a Bengals fan. That part is true. Marvin Lewis took the Bengals from a Drek franchise, like Kevin Stefanski, and turned them into a consistent winner, like Kevin Stefanski. Now, Marvin Lewis was given a long time to get to that next step, and he never won a playoff game. Kevin Stefanski won one. All right. Either way, he's got to be able to take this team to the next step, which next step is a deep run in the playoffs. And then eventually you got to win a title. But he's got to make a deep run in the playoffs sometime in the next, I would say, three years. I think some people would argue only one or two. I would say in the next three years, he's got to make a deep run. I'd like it to happen sooner rather than later. But obviously, it's got to happen. He can't lose in the first round. Keep losing the first round. Eventually, you go. That's, and, and the Bengals kept Marvin Lewis too long, but he deserved that job for a while. He had raised the level of that franchise. Kevin Stefanski has done the same in Cleveland. Can he raise it again? I think he can, but he's got to prove it. I didn't think, and I don't want to make a whole Baker thing, and kudos to Baker. He played very well against Philadelphia. He's 2-1 and one in the playoffs, seven touchdowns, one pick in three playoff games. He's played very well. Overall, he's been terrible against good teams, even this year, but he has won three of his last four games against teams over 500. It's the first time he's ever done that in his career. And last month, won back-to-back games against the team that finished the season over 500 for the first time in his career. So kudos to him. But ultimately, whether I turn out to be right or wrong in the long term, whether the Browns turn out to be light, right or wrong in the long term, I thought Baker was good enough to make them good. But I didn't think he was good enough to take him to that next level. Neither did the Browns. That's why they moved on from Deshaun Watson. Whether they ultimately got it wrong, whether I ultimately got it wrong on Baker, whether they ultimately got it wrong, whether I ultimately got it wrong on Deshaun Watson is two separate arguments. You can't put them together. And we don't know yet for sure. We don't know yet for sure. I feel very confident that Baker couldn't take him to that next level. I'm not confident anymore that Deshaun Watson can. I hope he can. I still think there's a chance he can, but I'm not nearly as confident as I was when they first got him. I don't know how you could be. Deshaun Watson is the biggest question heading into this season. As we ask, okay, year three and year three in the system, will you do what needs to be done? Will you adjust to what Kevin Stefanski wants you to do and don't force him to change the whole team to fit what you're more comfortable with. Because I think Joe Flacco showed us that Kevin's the fancy system works. It's worked for everybody but Deshaun Watson. Deshaun needs to get on board. He is fully capable of doing all the things Joe Flacco did and doing them better. The question is, will he? Will his mind get in the way? Will his stubbornness, if that's it, I don't know if it is, get in the way? Will his confidence get in the way? I don't know. But Deshaun Watt, the reason, you see, there's a lot of people that will say the Browns won 11 games. They had all these injuries. No reason they won't be better next year. I mean, did you just wake up under a rock? You never know from year to year. We see every year teams that you think are good and the next year they're not. Teams that we thought were going to be good this year that didn't make the playoffs. And some of this is injuries, certainly, but some of it's not. The Jets, the Bengals, the Jaguars, the Chargers. The Giants, now I didn't think they were going to be good, but other people did. Minnesota. Some people with the Saints. Seattle. I mean, there's a lot of teams, and every year we have those teams. Could the Browns be one of those teams? Well, to me, there's two categories of teams that play well. There's the the categories of teams that got there that got there and have a great quarterback or at least a very good quarterback. And there's the teams that got there without the good quarterback and a lot of flukiness to a season. Now, the Bills, the Ravens, the Texans, the Chiefs, even though Mahomes didn't have a great season, the Cowboys, 
the Eagles, the Lions. I would even say the Packers. He was great late in the season. I would even say the Buccaneers. I'll give him that. Baker had a good year. Yeah, no, I'm going too. I'm going. I'm going too far. Now he played. I just went against my own rule. It's a quarterback that you believe is great. Baker played very well this season, and even Jordan Love is not great, or not a top ten quarterback, not yet. But the rest of those teams, Philadelphia, uh, San Francisco, and even the Rams, because Stafford got back to being that top ten type of quarterback. Those teams you have more faith in. Now, the ones that have the older quarterbacks like Stafford, you're not 100% sure he's still going to be good the following year. Okay, that's a question mark. The Browns making the playoffs was fluky. We all know that. Now, maybe next year they make the playoffs. They're good. They're even better, and it's not fluky. It's because their defense is good again. Wasn't great. We thought it was great. Clearly, when you really are honest about the whole season. It wasn't great. It was good. And if it if it's good again next year and Deshaun Watson plays like the guy we expected him to be when the Browns traded for him, and I'm accepting nothing less. I mean, if he's the a, a tenth best quarterback in the league next year, am I going to be bummed about that? No, based on my expectations right now. But the Browns traded for him and gave up three first-round picks and made him the highest-paid player in the league because they thought he was a top-five quarterback. A Super Bowl difference maker. Clearly hasn't been that so far. If he is, then the Browns will move into that first category next year. But right now, they're in the second category. Maybe even the third category. Because I might have to make three categories. One for the great quarterbacks. Two for the quarterbacks that had a great season but you don't maybe trust the next season, and then the third for completely fluky. And the Browns are in the fluky category because their quarterback play was was terrible. And a lot of things about their season don't make sense why they made the playoffs. They can't get to the playoffs consistently the way they did this year. That's my point. And that doesn't – I'm not saying they won't make it next year. It's way too early to decide on that. I think that the Browns ha- certainly have a chance to make the playoffs again next year. But nobody's a lock, first of all, and certainly the Browns can't be in their division with an unknown at quarterback, and that's the reality. I know some people, I, I'm sick, you know, listen, I play into it. I've been, I'm a big part of it. I, at times, was too harsh with my criticism of Baker Mayfield. I still don't think he's a quarterback. To me, even though he had a good year, he still didn't play overall that well against the better teams, and his career has not been clutch and has not played well against the better teams. But he's had his moments, including against Philadelphia, and the way I talked about him, especially last year, was a little too much because I never thought Baker was a scrub. I just didn't think he was good enough. And ultimately, I still think he's in that, you know, 16 to 22 category of NFL quarterbacks. I don't want a guy in that category. It's better than what the Browns had before that. I don't want that guy. And I want I, I expect Deshaun Watson to be at the very least in the top ten, and I'm hoping he can be in the top five. Right now, that seems ludicrous to say, but that's my expectation. We'll see if he can do it. It's going to be a fascinating off season. It's a lot the Browns have to get done. Will they extend Stefanski? Will they extend Barry? Uh, and what about all the veteran free agents they have? The offensive line's getting old. There's some bad contracts there and injuries. It's going to be fascinating. Uh, one final thing on the playoffs. I don't have a lot of time, so just just real quick. This weekend was awful. The Dolphins, the Browns, the uh, Eagles, and the Cowboys were absolutely pitiful. Uh, we've already talked about the Browns. I've talked plenty. The other teams deserve no conversation. The Dolphins were disgusting. The Eagles were a disgrace, the way they collapsed down the stretch. Nice job by the Packers. Fantastic. Jordan loves playing amazing football. He 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 was awesome in that game. And the Chiefs did what they had to do. Exciting win for the Lions over the Rams. That was a fun game. Both those teams are good. They played hard. And I'll give the Steelers credit. They lose by 14, but they hung in there after being down big early against a team that's way better than – they were the biggest dog of the week. And outside of the Rams, they played best of all the teams that lost. But in the end, they suck and haven't won a playoff game in forever. 
in their quarterback situation is a disaster. And they shouldn't go to the playoffs next year, even though their talent, even though they've been underrating their talent overall for the last few years with that terrible quarterback situation. But if they improve it, they've certainly got a shot. Hopefully the games this weekend will be better. We'll start to get into some Cavs. Definitely some Guardians coming up. I got plenty to say about them. We'll get to that next week. A couple of things. Shout out to Mike Missinelli, our uh, guy in Philly for Bet Rivers. He beat me by one game in the Bet Rivers picks. I had the lead for most of the year. He had a three-game lead on me coming into the weekend. I, he was 0-4 on Saturday and Sunday. I was 3-1, and so we were tied. Then we both had the Bills. We had still tied. He had the Bucks. I had the Eagles. Friggin' Eagles. They killed me. Congratulations to him. Jimmy Ott, our gambling guru here at Bet Rivers. He and I finished, I believe we finished tied for second one game back. It was a great competition. Uh, Mike Francesa, who won last year, had a great end to his. I don't know how he did in the playoffs, but I know last few weeks he did great. He he made it close. Dan McNeil had a good season as well. So everybody, most of the guys did pretty well. So shout out to everybody. It was a fun competition. And Mike gets the kudos for uh, being the winner there. On Thursday, we'll be doing a live edition of the bullpen. Every Thursday, we're still finalizing the times. I think we're going to do it 6 p.m. this week. And we'll mostly do it at 6 p.m., but we'll finalize it. Uh, but plan for 6 p.m. this Thursday. I'm going to bring you, the fans that are watching, on with me to ask questions or make comments. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's something I'm going to do every Thursday, the bullpen live. That's it for now. Thanks to Brian Monzo for producing. We'll talk to you next time. Where else? But right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. See you, everybody.